This is Cotswold District Council Live. Hello and Merry Christmas. We've really got to change that um, intro card. I have no hair in it. This Welcome back Cotswold to District Cotswold District Council Live. I am Councillor Joe Harris, leader of Cotswold District Council, and today I am joined by Councillor Jenny Ford, and we're hoping to be joined by Councillor Dale, who is stuck in traffic, would you believe? For the Christmas edition of Cotswold District Council Live, we'll be discussing our economic recovery work, talking to Charity P3 about homelessness prevention, and we have some helpful tips on festive recycling to share. This is your opportunity to learn all about what your local council is doing, ask us questions and help shape the future of the district. Once again, many thanks to the Barn Theatre here in the centre of Sirencester for hosting us. So, Christmas in the Cotswolds. <laughs> I'm Paul James, I'm the Economic Development Lead for Cotswold District Council. I'm here in Sirencester Town Centre with uh, Councillor Patrick Coleman, the Mayor of Sirencester. We've just been having uh, a look round the town centre, now the shops are back open and the Christmas lights are up, so we're seeing how festive it's looking. And we've been talking about the support uh, that's been taking place to help our, uh, our businesses here in the uh, town centre. So Patrick, tell us a little bit about uh, what, what we've been doing. Well, we've had a walk through the town and we've seen some of the excellent Christmas displays that retailers are putting in, in their windows, uh, keeping up a grand tradition in this town. We've talked about the shopping guide that's been delivered to every house in the town and in most of the surrounding villages. It's uh, been well supported by the retailers and uh, work done by the town council staff visiting every shop uh, in the town, getting them to sign up and there's a scheme where if you go round enough, you get a sticker on each of them and you get the chance of a prize. We've had tremendous support. I'd like to thank the retailers for that. We've had five or six new retailers open in the last month, just before, during and after lockdown, doing the work to come up. We see signs of activity, we see signs of health. We know we've got to go on building back better. I think thanks to Paul for the work he's doing to help us maintain and improve the quality of jobs in the town as well. Thank you, uh, Patrick. It's great to, uh, to hear about everything that's taking place in Sirencester, working with the town council and other partners to support our businesses here. And of course, there's lots happening around the whole of the Cotswold district to support our businesses, right from administering the business grants from the government to help them through the tough times of the, the pandemic and the, the lockdown to the work that we're doing with maybe to help uh, businesses improve their digital presence and of course that's even more important uh, during these times when uh, there's been business closed through lockdown and when footfall uh, has been reduced and of course we want people to come back into our, our town centres so we're getting a campaign underway to get people not only to come back but to come back and do it in a safe way so supporting things like uh, social distancing making sure that people uh, follow the hands face space uh, mantra that the, the government has put out because we want people to come back to the town centres, enjoy them, uh, to support our businesses 
and to make sure that they stay safe as well. So uh, thank you again, Patrick. It's been great to, to be here in Sirencester to, uh, to see this festive displays, to hear about the businesses that are thriving in the town. And of course, we'd like to see more of the, the festive displays and activities from around the district. So please do send us your photographs uh, and videos of what you've got on your doorstep. Bit of a traffic jam there in Blackjack Street. Um, Jenny, have you done your Christmas shopping yet? Do you know what? I, I almost have done all of it, and I've really tried, and we've really tried as family this year to do the majority of it in Sirencester. And actually, it's proved a lot easier than I thought. There's a real... I tell you what, it was lovely yesterday in particular. The weather was beautiful, and just walking around the town, and there was a little bit of busking going on, and the sparkling lights, and... People were in good spirits, I think, and I, I spoke to every uh, shop that I went into, into to ask how they were getting on, and they said that um, trade was really good, so I'm really encouraged. I think people really are genuinely putting their money where their mouth is and going out and shopping locally, which is great. Brilliant. Tony, you were late. I'm guessing that's because the traffic was so bad, because people were trying to go to the shop. Um, <laughs> yeah, to yeah, shop. yeah, it was pretty good. I, I have to say, it, it was really good to see lots of the traffic heading straight into Sirencester, so that's, <laughs> that's really nice. And I hope that yeah, when people go in, they are, they are thinking, they're thinking about how to be safe, but they're going to the local shops and they're spending their money, Joe. And we've got such a fantastic offer. We'll see in a video we've got a bit later, we've got a fantastic offer. But, you know, you're, you're sort of in the mid Cotswolds, aren't you? North Leach, Borton, Stowe, more yep. lots to offer as well. Yeah, very, very busy there. And, um, I mean, I've come straight from North Leach now. Uh, the, the butchers is open and busy. They're operating a one-in-one-out policy, but they have queues outside. So does the post office. So does the pharmacy. I hope people are good and well. Uh, and, of course, Borton and Stowe have been equally busy. So uh, I hope the traders are making the most of it. I really do. So I think as we speak, um, I gather that the uh, Prime Minister is um, talking to the nation about um, what's going to be happening at Christmas. Um, it's going to be a long... Uh, you know, it has been a long, tough year for all of us, and this Christmas is going to be quite different, and in many cases very different. And it's going to be really tempting to just say, to heck with it for the five days of these restrictions. But we really want to urge you to please look out for your family, your friends and your neighbours, and only meet up if you really, really need to. Otherwise, it's really important that we stay safe. Great. So... It's going, to be a, it's going to be a challenging Christmas, isn't it? Let's be, let's be honest about that. But I think what's been fotastic is we've seen so many examples, haven't we, across the Cotswolds. And there, there is excitement, you know. It is, it is Christmas. OK, it's very different. But, you know, people are getting excited. Yeah, they are. They are getting excited. And actually, I had a bit of a tearful moment yesterday, personally. Um, the um, choir um, at Sirens of the Deer Park School had recorded a Christmas album um, unbeknownst to um, us and um, they'd all recorded individually from home uh, you know, using headsets and microphones and uh, Miss Fawkes who's an amazing uh, music teacher there had then produced it and brought it all together you can, um, you can access it on YouTube and it is absolutely stunning and really beautiful and we just had a real moment when we were listening to it as a family last night where we thought oh you know and I I've got tingles down my spine, you know, just as we would have done if we'd been watching them in a live performance. So, I've, uh, you know, hats off to all the people that are really trying to recreate, um, you know, those traditions and keep them going for everybody. It's been amazing. Tony, we were out in Lechlade, weren't we, um, a week yes. or two ago? And yes. It's amazing. You know, people are making the effort. The Christmas lights we saw on people's houses were really impressive, weren't they? Absolutely. And I think everyone is trying to make the most of the Christmas that we've got this year. Mm. You know, it isn't going to be like all the Christmases we've had before, but people are being positive, they're thinking about what they're doing, and, you know, great, I want people to make the effort, um, we have to beat this and we will beat it. Simple as that. Thanks, Tony. So, shops, um, shop safe, I should say, and shop local. So, for our next segment, we'll be taking a look at our high street economy and the effects of the business community to bounce back from COVID-19. Over the past year, businesses have had to adapt to frequent and rapid changes to help slow the spread of COVID-19 and keep our residents safe. It's been a challenging year for us all, but it doesn't have to be a challenge to get the most out of the businesses on your doorstep this Christmas. The Cotswolds has a wide range of exceptional businesses, with many of our market towns featuring independent retail stores and hospitality businesses. 
So, rather than doing your shopping with a global online company, we're asking residents to try to buy what they need locally in the first instance. There are lots of independent businesses, much like the one I'm standing in today, where you can buy lots of local produce or local products or locally produced arts and crafts to give as wonderful gifts this Christmas. So I'm stood inside the Corinian Museum shop. It's a great place to buy some individual gifts and personalised items locally. And also, whilst you're here, you can pop into the museum and enjoy some of our local history. Why not support some of the lovely local independent shops in Chipping Camden this Christmas? We have a wide array of them and they sell fantastic gifts, all price ranges for all members of your family and friends. We have three new gift shops, Humble, Dove and Four Seasons. And not, let's, let's not forget the charity shop, Camden Home Nursing. This has got a wonderful range of goods in there and supports a local charity looking after people who are terminally ill at home. I have been in awe at how our community in Tetbury and the wider Cotswolds have come together to support each other this year. It's now our time to support our local shops and traders by shopping local this Christmas. We have a wealth of independent shops and hospitality venues in the Cotswolds, so please do your part and support local business this holiday season. This Christmas, why not get out to your local greengrocers or butchers for all those Christmas trimmings? Come and buy some flowers for your loved one. All about flowers in Letchlade. Fabulous artisan flower seller. Of course, you can go and buy toys for your children in Morton Marsh or the Bolton Model Railway. And don't forget, there's a fabulous Cotswold distillery in Bolton as well. Here in Letchlade as well is Vera's Kitchen. Come and have a cup of coffee. Fabulous. And a piece of cake to go with it. What a great way to set yourself up for Christmas. So let me leave you with one message this Christmas. Shop locally if you can, and remember, lots of our local shops are online. If they are online, do it from the comfort of your own home. Shop and buy locally from your home online. If they don't take orders online, and some don't, then give them a ring. You never know, they may be able to supply it direct to you, or you could do a click and collect. But whatever you do, stay safe, shop local. And if I can leave you with one, just one little message, do look after your friends and family and neighbours this Christmas. Thank you. Shot safe. Shot safe. Shot safe. Well, uh, as you can see there, Joe, uh, it's really important that we do our bit for business. I don't think any of us is going to say that we've had um, an easy uh, year this year. It's been tough for businesses all round. What I have been amazed and impressed by is their ability to be resilient, to be agile, to be resourceful, and to really, really put effort into making it safe but enjoyable for the customer, from a customer experience point of view. We've created pavement licenses, as you know, and a lot of our businesses have taken those up. We've got tables and chairs outside. We've seen lots of um, catering and hospitality establishments make the most of those pavement licenses and get people socialising outdoors safely in their groups up to six if they can if they're in the right tier and we've done lots to try and support the economy by reinvigorating these kinds of things with local chambers of commerce with local business groups and i and i really hope the businesses will keep on doing that irrespective of what happens to tiering as long as we can keep it safe and people are still coming out and engaging and enjoying what they're doing we'll all be in a great place great jenny um you've been I know you're a fan of shopping. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that, I'm gonna let that float there. But you've been, you've been, um, you've been visiting lots of businesses, haven't you, I over have the been past, lots past of few businesses. weeks? So um, tell us how they get on. I've been taking Tony's advice to heart and been trying to support as many businesses as I can, um, in in all sorts of ways. And I, I, it's really interesting, isn't it? It's like Tony says, the ones that are really responding to this as a challenge and really thinking creatively. I mean, you know, places like somewhere else in Sirencester, just fantastic. You know, you try and get a table there outside at the weekend, it's impossible because they've really worked to make it as encouraging and a nice place to be as possible. I also think there's gonna be a real resurgence in customer service because, you know, businesses are realizing that they need to make the whole experience feel safe and welcoming and friendly and um, you know that was start, that was starting to be a bit of a dying art but I feel like there's been a real resurgence of that 
Um, so actually going into a shop and talking to um, the people that are serving you and the other customers and what have you is, is starting to feel like a really nice experience again. And I almost feel like what Siren Center in particular is getting back to the days, day, you know, the days gone by where um, it, was a, it was a nice thing to do to, to go around your local shop. So, um, yeah, places that have really embraced the changes and thought creatively all the time. How can they get people through the doors? How can they make people feel safe? How can they make people, you know, have a, have a nice time? in a safe environment is, you know, has really impressed me, actually. And Tony, how are the people that sold you that suit jacket and... Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they're getting... <laughs> well, well, yeah, they're, they're doing very nicely, actually. But let me just say, I, I have worked really hard to try and get out, particularly the hospitality sector. Joe has been hit hard by this. Mm. They've had to work hard, and they all know they've had to spend extra money despite being in circumstances where they can't get as many people through the door. Mm. You know, and it's not easy. But to give you, for example, I was at the Bull in Fairford, great operating procedures, sanitizers at the door, one-way systems, tables spaced out, full top marks to the Bull, same when I went to Letchley, the Trout, I've been to the New Inn, I've put my head, uh, we've had a couple of coffees, takeaway coffees from the Linwood in Letchley. I am really, really, uh, you know, just chuffed to bits and really proud of how the local businesses and the hospitality businesses have really worked hard to make this a great experience for people. And I just want to carry on staying open. The best we can do as local residents is to get out and enjoy the, that hard work they've put in. Absolutely. So shop local and stay safe is the message of the day. And if there are any businesses watching, then please do sign up to Cotswold District Council's newsletter, our Business Matters newsletter. If you just type in Business Matters into Google and Cotswold District Council Business Matters, you'll be able to sign up and you'll be able to get all of the latest updates on government support, um, etc. through our regular newsletter. So get up and sign on to that. We're going to talk now about housing and homelessness support. So winter um, can often be a cause for concern and is sometimes a dangerous prospect for people who sleep rough or are threatened with homelessness. This year, there, of course, there is the added complexity and risk of COVID-19 and services have had to quickly adapt. As a council, we are working with the charity P3 to ensure we have extra measures in place to protect vulnerable people from life-threatening cold weather, as well as the risk of contracting COVID-19 and provide them with support into accommodation. The work P3 has accomplished this year has saved lives. We will continue to provide rough sleepers and people facing homelessness with the support they need to rebuild their lives and part of our commitment to end rough sleeping for good. Earlier this month, our Cabinet Member for Housing and Homelessness, Councillor Lisa Spivey, met with P3's Head of Support and Community Services, Matt Gasside. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Councillor Lisa Spivey and I'm the Cabinet Member for Housing and Homelessness here at Cotswold District Council. And I'm delighted to be joined today by Matt from P3. Hi, my name is Matt Gasside. I'm Head of Support and Community Services for P3 here in Gloucestershire. Matt, can you tell us a bit more about P3 and what your role is? What do the three P's stand for? Yeah, sure. So um, P3 was a name that was... Um, that our, our clients uh, use to name the charity. So it stands for People, Potential, Possibilities. So here in Gloucestershire, we have services um, for those who are homeless and those who require housing advice and assistance. That's right, you're a housing support. So yeah, it's, it's housing and support, yeah. Brilliant, that's great. Um, well, all things housing and homelessness have had a pretty rough year this year. Um, I know that when we had I guess in some ways it's a good thing we had that everyone in initiative um, when the pandemic really struck. So Absolutely. did you see a lot of people come to you through that? Yeah, we did. Yeah. We've had an ever so busy year, as you say. It's been a, a different year for everybody, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, but um, obviously it was real sort of high profile on the, those who were rough sleeping during the, um, during the lockdown. And so we had to work really quickly to make sure everyone was brought inside. Um, and in Gloucestershire, that, that was into um, a, a range of hotels that were provided um, through the council. Yeah. So uh, we we already knew who the people were, uh, uh, and we already know who those who are rough sleeping are. We're engaged with all of those individuals across the county. So it was fairly straightforward for us to go meet those individuals and try our best to encourage them into the hotels. 
Yeah, that, that was fairly successful, wasn't it? I think, you know, during that first lockdown, like you say, you did really manage to get... Very successful, yeah. Everybody I mean, in. Exactly. And, you know, I've been working with homeless people in, in Gloucestershire for over 15 years now, and our aim's always to end homelessness, you know. And it, it was amazing, really, because um, through the lockdown, we were able to do that in a matter of days. I think it took us 10 days to be able to get everybody into those hotels originally. We, we were seven days a week and very long hours, but um, we just wanted to make sure everyone was safe and obviously a knock-on effect to, to keeping um, other residents in the county safe as well during the pandemic. Yeah, amazing, because I know that for many of the people who are rough sleeping or, or homeless, maybe in sleeping in cars and things, it's not always as exactly what it, what it seems, is it, that um, residents approached me and they're, they're very concerned, but I know from the work that, that you do that the vast majority of those people you have already contacted and are known right. to you. Yeah, I mean, I mean if, if, if any residents are concerned, the first thing they should do is to uh, refer to us via Streetlink, which is, a, is an app on the phone, a website, or there is also a free phone number. Um, you can just search online for Streetlink and, and it'll pop up. That's the referral route. That's how we know about people who are out there. So um, members of the public can use it, council workers use it, you know, the police use it, other agencies use it. So it, the first thing to do if, if you're concerned about somebody is to, um, is to use Streetlink, to notify us where they are and, um, and we'll go out to, to meet them. Great. So yes, yeah, so if I if I see somebody, I go to Street Link. I, I make this referral, and then you'll send somebody out to right, to yeah. contact them and, yeah. and see how you can help. We've got uh, teams who work across the whole of Gloucestershire. We've got a, a pair of outreach staff who focus specifically on the Cotswolds as well. So um, they will go out, meet with those individuals, um, try and find out what the issue is, what why are they rough sleeping, yeah, and and then build up that rapport and try to. Um, Make inroads really as to as to what what it is that individual needs. Obviously, they need accommodation, but there's there's always an underlying reason why people have chosen to sleep out. I mean, they don't choose to sleep out. It's um, it's it's um, the position they find themselves yeah. in. Yeah. So uh, we then put a package of support together, um, specific to that individual, uh, involving other agencies as and when required. Yeah, it's almost complex, isn't it? It's never... Yeah, and um, and and try to move them off the streets and into accommodation uh, with or without support. Yeah, and I guess there's going to be, there's always a challenge over winter, um, but this year again, yeah. being in the pandemic, we see an even bigger challenge because perhaps hostels or, uh, you know, temporary overnight accommodation that we might have used is not COVID safe. Absolutely. So any any communal accommodation is currently you know, not COVID safe and so yeah. it's not being used um, this winter. Um, we, we didn't use very much of it anyway right. in Gloucestershire, but, um, but that, has a, that has an impact. It means that our, our options that we have available now are our existing homelessness pathway, our, our hubs which are available to move people straight into if they're willing to move into them at the point in which we verify that they're rough sleeping. Yeah, okay. Uh, um, we, we, we also um, occasionally have to use hotel placements. But um, just to reassure people that if, if, if they are seeing somebody who's sleeping out, that person will have been offered these, these various options. Um, you know, sometimes people get confused between uh, people who are rough sleeping and those who are street begging. Right. Um, so we do get street links through for people who we know are accommodated, but, but are street begging. Right, um, yeah, so you know that they've got, yes, a place to yeah, stay. But unfortunately, yeah. sometimes they, they appear to be rough sleeping but but they're not again we've built up some really good sort of intelligence and information by working with these people over a long period of time so just let us know and 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 we'll do the rest okay that's that's brilliant uh well matt it seems like you've done not only a massive amount of work already this year but you've got a lot of work to continue over the winter so i just want to say you know thank you for for all of that great work that you're doing and your team and uh, kind of good luck with it and um just as a reminder then to everybody who is concerned, they, it's www.streetlink.org, is that right? Absolutely. If yeah. you're concerned about anyone, please use Streetlink and, and we'll, get, we'll get right out there. Okay. Thank Fantastic. You. Thank you. That will never get old. 
time for a waste update from Councillor Andrew Doherty, our Cabinet Member for Waste and Recycling. The festive season is upon us, as you can see from the hat, and with everyone's spirits high, it's easy to forget about the importance of disposing of waste correctly. But at Christmas, we collect a lot more waste than we do the rest of the year. So the three R's, reduce, reuse and recycle, are more important than ever. So we're going to give you five top tips to help you get ready for an eco-friendlier Christmas. So not all the wrapping paper and Christmas cards you might use can be recycled. Most Christmas cards, tiny bit glossy, but as long as it's mostly paper and not a lot of plastic on it, that's okay. And a lot of them will tend to say things like widely recyclable. Where it gets a bit trickier are going to be things like wrapping paper. So your nice, glossy, shiny wrapping paper everybody loves. You stunt it up and it pops straight back into shape again. That's no use. That's got to go in the bin, unfortunately. That's not recyclable. If you're looking at something that's much more ordinary paper, so good tip, if you're busy doing online shopping from all the usual retailers, the paper that they provide you with is normally exactly that. It's paper. So this, for example, is brilliant for recycling and could use it as a nice, simple, much better reuse for your wrapping paper. Same with things like delivery boxes. If you've got your delivery boxes, we're looking for you to be able to reduce the number of boxes you get. So if you're ordering from a supplier, sometimes they've got options about can you ship it in as few boxes as possible. Make use of that, you've got less vans trundling around the roads and you've got less material and packaging coming through to you. Where you've got a box, something like this, what we really need you to do is to try and break it up. So you get the whole thing as flat as possible. If you do that kind of thing, you're going to get a lot more in your blue cardboard bag and you'll be able to fill it up much more easily as you put things in there. If you've got more cardboard than you can deal with in one collection, then it really helps us at Christmas if you can pad it out a little bit and maybe keep the cardboard in the garage, in a cupboard, somewhere a little bit out of the way, and then gradually put it out over the course of two or three collections. Sometimes you might have slightly bulkier bits of cardboard. Things like this is pretty common if you're buying bits. This is just shaped cardboard. So if you fancy doing an incredible Hulk, you can simply squash it, Hulk smash, and that turns into something then that's much, much smaller. That again will go in your uh, blue bag more easily. Or this is the kind of stuff to save up and make as few trips as you can sensible off to the Household Recycling Centre. They're still taking bookings, they're open, you can get in, it's nice, it's quiet, it's COVID secure, and then you can get any excess material you've got out that way if you've got too much or not enough room to store it at home. There's also going to be lots of food waste going on over Christmas because obviously everyone's tending to eat a tiny bit more than maybe they normally would be. So the things we're encouraging you to do is make sure you keep food waste separate. Remember, if you're doing peelings, Brussels sprouts, if you like that kind of thing, if you're only peeling your Brussels sprouts, that kind of stuff can go in your compost heap if you're at home. Probably not cutting the grass as much at the minute. That helps keep your compost heap going over the winter. And then all your meaty, your fishy, your stuff that's fatty, all that kind of stuff is going in your food waste bin. And that food waste bin is then coming across to us to collect. And we're particularly looking at this time of year for you to be careful about what's going in the food waste bin. So anything that is food goes in food waste. Anything that's not food doesn't go in food waste. Otherwise, it's causing us problems of contamination and that material then can't get recycled and processed properly again. So try and keep your food waste down. Make good use of what you've got. Only buy what you need and look at all those fabulous recipes you'll find floating around now for leftover dishes. Me, I love turkey sandwiches for the entire week after Christmas and we use up the whole turkey that way. So look for those kinds of things so you've got less waste going on. Okay, please also use the recycling service for glass but make sure you're not putting any broken glass into the recycling boxes as if you do that the crews can't collect it. It's a big safety problem for them. Glass bounces around, bits of broken glass end up in people's faces. That's all bad. So if you've got something that's got broken, obviously I'm not using a broken one because that would be bad for us here. We need you to double wrap it in paper. So get it well wrapped inside some paper, some reasonably solid newspaper or wrapping paper, and then put that in a plastic bag. And then that whole thing like this goes across into your black bin and goes out with your normal waste. And it's safe and it's not got a person handling it and there's no chance of anyone cutting their hands on that, for example. So check your household bin collection dates. 
There are different dates due to the bank holidays. Uh, the team still collect on most days, but obviously they're not collecting on Christmas Day, for example. So some of your normal collection days are going to change. If you haven't got one of these, you can go onto the website, cotswold.gov.uk forward slash bins, and on there you can see a revised version of the dates for the festive period when we're actually going to be collecting. All the more information you might want about waste and recycling, that's also on the website. So if you're unsure about anything to do with what goes where, what you can put out, what you can't put out, and how to sort your waste, all the answers to all those questions can be found on the website. And last thing, it's been a difficult year for everybody, so we thank everybody for all of your efforts, particularly with the launch of the new waste service this year, in reducing, reusing and recycling. Please stay safe, enjoy the festive season. Don't know where to begin with that video, whether it's the <laughs> Christmas hat without the bobble, the, the jumper, but no, some very serious messages in there and it's really crucial that you know you do your bit to make sure that our waste service continues to function because if we all overload it, if we all suddenly stick all of the cardboard we've had from our online deliveries and elsewhere, um, well, I'm afraid to say that the waste service will grind to a halt. Um, reduce, reuse, recycle, that's the, that's the message. Jenny, you were, you were sort of saying, weren't you, you were spending, you know, it does take time, but you were cutting up all your cardboard. Yeah, I know. I'm really, I'm, I'm really into it now. Uh, Andy's, Andy's converted me, and also I'm slightly a little bit scared of him. So, um, yeah, every, <laughs> every Tuesday night I'm out there thinking, what would Andy do, what would Andy do, and crushing stuff and doing the Hulk smash and making sure that everything's as small and compact as possible. So, Absolutely. The, yeah. Hulk, the Hulk smash, that is a first one, isn't it? I know, it, I'm loving CDC the Hulk Live. smash. Like, I'm Tony, so doing that. Are you, who does the recycling in your household? I assume it's you. Uh, well, yeah, of course I put it out because it's heavy and it's always messy, so of course it's me. Uh, my wife, to be fair, does a fabulous job in all sorting it out. So actually, she's tending to buy fresh food, which is really good. We don't have packaging for that. And, and I'm drinking less, so obviously that's fewer bottles, which is good a good work. thing. Uh, but the cardboard, of course, this time of year, lots of orders. And so I've got the youngsters actually making sure that they're squashing the cardboard down, folding it up, making sure it's really neat and safe for them to collect. And it works. It was good. Good work, Tony. No gender stereotypes in that household. No. You know, sharing <laughs> out the jobs very equally. That is what we like to see. Excellent news indeed. Um, I'm going to go now to a few questions. We've had one from Don in Morton. Um, for you, Tony. Um, unfortunately, Don hasn't been able to access um, any sort of government support and having a tough time. Where's the best place to go? He wants to know for sort of advice. Well, uh, I think, Don, it depends on what type of support you're after. If you are uh, thinking about local services, then for sure a visit to the cotswold.gov.uk um, website to see what we can do in the Cotswolds District Council for you. If you are struggling with paperwork, perhaps, um, you can go and talk to Citizens Advice, and they're very good. I can thoroughly recommend them. If you are perhaps struggling with some of the more mental health issues, and I know lots of us have suffered with those sorts of challenges, then there are lots of numbers out there you can ring. Um, in the Court of Last Resort, by all means, ring the Samaritans. They are a fantastic service. But I know Jenny has talked a lot and done a lot of work about um, you know, our mental health and how we're all struggling a little bit sometimes with um, with how life is during lockdown. If there are financial concerns you have, uh, again, go and talk to the, um, your, your local advisor and your adult support worker, and they can help you deal with debt. Very often your own bank can help you reschedule your payments. So don't feel alone. Absolutely do not feel alone. Um, both Cotswold District Council and the Social Services part of Gloucester, City Can Gloucester County Council are there to help you. Make sure you come and talk to people and engage. Okay. Jenny, I've got a question here from Jenny in Stowe, um, who talks, um, I'm going to paraphrase it because it's quite a long question, but um, she's talking about the government, in her words, flip-flopping um, on the COVID sort of restrictions and regulations. And she's sort of saying that she doesn't really know where to where to turn and it's all very confusing. So, yeah. Jenny, I know you're sort of, I, I, I sort of delegated COVID to you, haven't I? I know you have, role. thanks very much but, for that, yeah. Um, it's the actual real definition of a hospital pass, yeah. So um, the last time we did this show, I think we announced all sorts of things, didn't we, about being in Tier 1 and how we were going to keep us that way. And then, then I think the very next day, they announced we were moving into Tier 2. So I'm going to say what I'm saying with, you know, uh, lots and lots of caveats um, around it. But, um, yeah, it is confusing. It is confusing. And I think the thing to remember is that you need to assess the risks yourself um, and that we mustn't forget... Um, to think about, to weigh up all the possibilities and think about the people that we care and love 
and want to protect and keep healthy. And, you know, there's that, there's that very simple thing to imagine that if everybody else has got COVID and go about things that way um, for the moment, until we get the vaccine, until we have better testing in place, I think you just have to um, proceed with caution mm. and, and make some good decisions and not, not get too worried about what's the rules, what's the laws. Just think, is this the right thing to do? Is this going to keep me and the people I love as safe as possible? Yes or no? And then make a decision based on that. Absolutely. And, and Jenny, that's the... That's the key point, isn't it? It's about, it's about using common sense. And I think what's really, you know, and to Jenny, you, you, you at home as well, we can see, you know, the end of this on the horizon. And I think for me, it's about whether it's going to be a quick journey there or it's going to be a delayed and a prolonged one. And if we don't, if we aren't careful over Christmas, if we, you know, basically have a normal Christmas and see everybody, then it's going to take a lot longer to get there, yeah, isn't it? You it know, really the vaccine's here. It's it on the horizon. Is, it could be a few months or it can be... I think you know. this is the darkest... You know, someone described it the other day as, that, you know, I know there's been a lot of analogies this year. It's been the year of the analogy, but somebody described it as we're in the middle of the night of this pandemic and you know that feeling when you're worried about something or stressed about something and it's the middle of the night and it just feels bigger and way more you know um, than you can really handle and there's not much you can do about it we're kind of in the middle of the night at the moment but the dawn is coming and you know and good times are going to be coming and there is help on the way and i think we just have to hold our nerve it's the middle of the night there's not much we can do we just need to stay at home stay safe and, and protect those that we love and care about. And, you know, the dawn is coming. Absolutely. Um, we'll take one more question now. This is a question I got from, um, from Tony. Are you sure you two haven't been just been submitting questions for me? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Tony asking about car parking. Um, hello, um, car parks in Siren Sister have been getting very full of late. Good news, I guess. Um, but, of course, it raises the old problem about capacity in Siren Sisters car parks. Mm -hmm. Having enough capacity going into 2021 in the post-COVID world um, is going to be important to support the local economy. What are you doing about uh, parking capacity as the Waterloo plans um, appear to have been shelved? Well, um, clarification, Waterloo plans haven't been shelved. We're reviewing them. We are discussing, you know, what... Um, different alternatives might be. The whole aim with that is to look at sustainable transport and tie it into planning with that. Because we have, you know, you think COVID is a crisis. If the climate goes, then, you know, it's going to make COVID look like a storm in a teacup. Um, so we've got, to, we've got to look at other options to make sure that we're, you know, not producing more carbon emissions. And fundamentally, I think we need to start saying this and be honest about this, trying to get people out of their cars. So we need to look at how we can support public transport. We need to look at better provision for public transport. Jenny, we, we speak all the time, don't we, about how appalling public transport is in the Cotswolds, how difficult it is to access we services do. like healthcare. And Absolutely. And, we're do, you know, we, we know that we're one of the, the least accessible places in the whole of the county. Um, for our access to services and we are looking at that and working on that all of the time sure. with all of our partners across the district yeah, yeah. And, and Tony just to, to finish answering the question um, we are we're building in more spaces into Siren Sisters so the White Way car park I think is due to open on um, Monday which is great news and what we're hoping to do is push long stay um, spaces out to the to, you know to the periphery of the town so the Waterloo and the car the beaches car park and make sure that those town centre spaces are short stay bays where shoppers can come in um, and use our local services um, and shops. But um, but yeah, so we are we are doing things. Please don't think we've been sat here using COVID as an excuse not to do anything. We've been busy this year on all sorts, and parking is certainly one of them. I think the question, oh, the thing I should say for 2021 is watch this space. We'll be engaging with you. We're about to em we're about to employ a sustainable transport um, officer at the council, which will help turbocharge that work. So we're going to look back now at 2020 um, and discuss some of the challenges. So Jenny, <laughs> a year ago, we've been cabinet members for six months. We were yeah. bright and optimistic about so the future. Were. Actually, this time last year, it was just after the general election. So for us, it was a bit more depressing. <laughs> but, um, but, um, but no, I mean, it was, it, it, a year ago was a very different place to where we're at now, wasn't it? Yeah, and it was. So what do you, you know, from your point of view, what's been, you know, 2020, when I say 2020, what do you think of? Yeah, okay. What are the lessons? So, well, I'm an eternal optimist, so, you know, I, you, you won't find me sitting here and moaning. I actually think that there's been lots of good that's come out of this pandemic. 
um, you know, the terrible, terrible stories and tragedies aside for one minute. Um, in terms of the, the boost it's given to our communities and our neighbourhoods and people talking to each other again and setting up local groups and activities and, um, you know, just generally looking out for each other has been amazing, you know, and I know we say that over and over again and it kind of, you know, it starts to, starts to get a bit boring after a while, but it's been genuinely true. Um, and that's kick-started all sorts of things. So in, in the new year, one of the things I'm really excited about is we're going to be launching um, a civic crowdfunding platform, uh, which means that people can set up projects and then raise money for them locally to improve their local areas. And I think that's going to really fly because people are already doing it. They're already coming to us saying, can we have some money for this? We want to do this. We want to improve our areas. So in, in that respect, there's, there's been that. I think in terms of... Um, mental health, it's obviously been a huge challenge, um, but again, I think what's been great about that is that people have felt comfortable talking about that as an issue, and I think it is starting to be treated on a par with physical health, which I think is a great thing, and I hope we can maintain that because I think it's really important to tackle. Um, I think also things like people shopping um, it's supporting independent businesses and, and shopping locally. Um, I think there was a real um, trend where people were starting to move away from that and just going for fast fashion and, you know, the fast Amazon and online services because it was quick and easy. Whereas I think it's made people stop and think about, um, you know, the uh, economy of kindness and, and people, you know, looking out for each other and doing the right thing by each other. Um, so I think there's been lots of challenges, but I think from those challenges have, become, have come real positive moves forward. Um, and um, I'm, you know, as ever, I'm one of those people, I'm excited by that. Um, keeping the leisure centres open has been, you know, a constant uh, battle and a challenge again. Yeah, but one that we, you know, seems to regularly um, change and, and turn on sure. sixpence. But uh, yeah, Brilliant. I would Thank say that's my summary. Th thank you, Jenny. And Tony? Um, mm. Mm. I was, I was well, just... Yeah, first year as a councillor, you've been thrown in the detail, <laughs> haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well I've, I'm, I've, I suppose I really have been learning fast. Um, it's been a lot of fun, and I've really enjoyed learning so much about how all of the things I've spent 30 years learning in the private sector have been possible to translate into the public sector and to bring, I believe, genuinely, a really energised view to the economy uh, in the Cotswolds. For me, I was trying to think of one word that summed it up. For me, it's outdoors. And I think this has been the year of outdoors for everyone. You know, many of us have gone outdoors and walked more in the Cotswolds. Many of us have exercised outdoors more, either by cycling. We know that sales of bicycles have never been stronger. You know, you almost have to pay the price of a car to get a decent cycle now. Um, but people have been out on any sorts of bicycles doing all sorts of cycling, whether it's road cycling, gravel cycling, off-road bicycling. And, of course, it makes us feel better, both mentally, it's good for, our, for us as exercise, I don't mind if people run, cycle, walk, whatever they do, but getting outdoors has been a great outcome for this year, and that's driven really good changes in the way we do business as well. I think all of our businesses have thought, well, if we have to be agile and flexible and responsive, what does it mean if we can only serve our customers in a much more outdoors and healthy environment? So our pubs and our cafes and our restaurants have all created outdoor spaces. They've thought about how they can do those in a relatively green and sustainable manner, how they can help people still enjoy the space to get together, but in a safe way, with their bubbles. But people have thought, what else does that mean as well? Outdoors can include using online facilities. You know, click and collect is one thing. Great, I can click on something, but I've still got to go and walk or cycle to go and get something. And I think right the way across the Cotswolds, lots and lots of people have risen to that challenge. And it's been great seeing our young people doing the same thing. So for me, great year of learning, great year of outdoors. Mm. I think for me, I've probably, you know... I've learned a great deal about myself, and I know many people have. It's been an incredibly difficult time, hasn't it? And, you know, I shared back in the summer my story about my mental health, and really it's got me thinking about that, and it forced me, I think, to make some positive changes. You know, seek help, look at the way I'm sort of living my life, you know, making sure I'm exercising regularly. And Tony, as you said, thank God for the outdoors, because I think that really saved me. You know, we had, we had a really nice summer on the whole, didn't we? And being able to access... 
you know, Sirencester Park and the Cotswold Water Park down here in the south of the Cotswolds. Well, there's a reason that everybody now wants to move here. <laughs> you, you've nailed it on the head. <laughs> just before we, just before we, um, we, we do move on, Jenny, it, you know, we're getting to a bit of a crossroads, aren't we? As I said, we can see the horizon. In terms of the vaccine, you know, we've been approached by people who, they're not like anti-vaxxers or anything like this, they don't believe in mad conspiracy theories like Bill Gates is controlling people, but you know, they do have, you know, yeah, they, they, they do. do have concerns. No, so what I'm would you say to those people? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, Joe, because I think it's really important that we make a distinction between anti-vaxxers and people who are sceptical and maybe understandably so about the vaccine. Um, so the anti-vaxxers, let's put over to the side because we're always going to have them. Um, but people that are sceptical and have genuine concerns, I think we should listen to and understand what they are and address those. Um, you know, it's understandable because, you know, the media do like to stir these things up and they love a good dramatic story, don't they? But I think, you know, people are genuinely, they do have genuine concerns about it. So we will be addressing that. Um, but the vaccine is on its way. Um, I really recommend, and I've, I've gone on about this a bit, I know, but um, How to Vaccinate the World by Tim Harford on Radio 4. It's a brilliant podcast, or if you just want to listen to it um, weekly. And it, they talk to the people that are making the vaccine and are delivering these trials, um, and they talk about everything, and you can send in your questions, and it is fantastic for understanding how it works. So, um, yeah, Cotswold remains one of the lowest in COVID infection rates. I genuinely believe that that's because of the the kindness of everybody and the kindness economy growing massively and there's incredible um, community spirit but the vaccine you know it is coming um, so we just need to um, brace ourselves and be ready for that brilliant and again it is we want to highlight the incredible community spirit you know across the Cotswolds so we've seen week in and week out in the summer and you know throughout the year the incredible, incredible communities that we have here in the Cotswolds. And, you know, on behalf of Cotswold District Council, on behalf of everybody, to everybody that's given their time, to all of our emergency service staff, the NHS, teachers, volunteers, our council workers, bin men and women, you know, everybody that's done their part to support the district and help us through this, let's be honest, really, really rubbish year. Thank you so much. The vaccine is here. The end of the year. Uh, the beginning of the end is nigh. The dawn is uh, the dawn is on its route. I, I can come up with all sorts of uh, you know cliches, but yeah, we are coming towards the end of this. But we have to sit tight. We have to be strong with our resolve. So, on behalf of everybody at Cotswold District Council, thank you for joining us this year. We wish you all a very happy Christmas and a peaceful and safe and healthy New Year. Until next year, see you then. <laughs>